Welcome. So in this lesson, we're going to be talking about piecewise functions. So these are functions which have different rules for different subsets of the domain. You might also hear them refer to as step functions or hybrid functions. So the first thing we're going to do here is sketch the graph of the function f and state the range. So let's look at our piecewise function here. As you can see, f of x is composed of three different rules, and each of these rules have a corresponding domain. So we need to make sure that we sketch each of these rules correctly across the correct domains. And we're just going to deal with them one by one. So let's deal with our first one right here, and we'll rewrite it down here. So we're trying to sketch y is equal to negative x minus 1, where x is less than 0. That's what we're trying to do first. If you're having trouble to picture what this looks like, a very good first step is just to find your x and y intercepts, isn't it? So I could come over here and I could say, well, what is my x intercept going to be? Well, remember, you find your x intercept by letting y equal 0. So if you were to do that, you're going to end up with x is equal to negative 1. And then you're going to find your y intercept, which occurs when x is equal to 0. So you're going to get y is equal to negative 1. Perfect. So that means I could come over here now and I can say, well, I've got a point here and a point here. So if I was to draw this now, and remember, you've got a ruler, so you're just going to put the ruler and you're going to nicely draw it like this, like that. Let's see if I can do that a bit nicer. Perfect. It's going to look like that. So that is what negative x minus 1 looks like. But now we need to consider our domain. My domain is x is less than 0. So what I need to do now is find the endpoint. To find the endpoint, you're going to look at your domain and sub in the relevant point. So in this case, it would be 0. So I'm going to take my rule and I'm going to sub 0 into it. And that's going to leave me with y is equal to negative 1. Therefore, I have an endpoint occurring at 0, negative 1, which is this point right here, 0, negative 1. This part of the graph doesn't exist because it's only x values less than 0. So everything here. Another thing you need to be careful of is the circle that you're going to put here. Do you see how this is less than zero, but not less than and equal to zero? So that means you need to put a open circle here because you're not including that point. Then you're gonna draw your line like this. Perfect, so we have done everything we needed to here. I also want to stop here for a moment and just really um, stress something. And that is, if you were doing this on a test and they've given you a axis, so a Cartesian plane that's been ruled up like this. Do you see how like I've got a grid, everything is ruled up. I need to be more precise than if there wasn't a ruled up grid here. So for instance, when I put negative two into the rule, I should be getting one out. This should actually be a point that the line goes through. And sure enough, if I do put negative two into this, negative two, negative two is positive two, two minus one is one. So that checks out. But just stressing that you need to make sure that if it is a grid, then you're making sure that the the rule is going through the appropriate points. At the end of the day, as long as you have two points and you, you're, you're using your ruler correctly, you'll be fine. Okay, let's also label this point here. This is zero, negative one. Perfect, let's now move on to our next rule, which is this. So it's two X minus one and there's my domain. So let's write that out. So I have Y is equal to two X minus one then zero is less than x is less than or equal to one. There it is. All right, so what can we do here? Let's begin by just finding the x-intercept. The x-intercept, when you let y equal zero, will be x is equal to a half, so it will be here. My y-intercept will be y is equal to negative one. So it's going to be this point right here. Therefore, if I was to sketch this, it's going to look like this, right? That's what it's going to look like. But now we have to be careful and look at our domain and figure out what our end points are going to be. So again, you're just going to sub in the relevant points here. So I'm going to sub in zero into the rule. So that means when I have two, zero, minus one, y is going to be equal to negative one, therefore, I have zero minus one as one of the points, and then I'm going to stop at one. So y is equal to two, one minus one, which means two minus one is two, minus one is equal to one. Therefore, the other point is going to be, when I have one in, I get one out. Perfect. So now I can come to my graph and I can just put in those points. So I've got this one here, zero, negative one, that's already labeled, and then I have another one at one, one. So right there. 
Uh, do you see how it's less than or equal to one? So that means it has to be a closed circle there. Then I draw a line connecting these, making sure that this point right here we know is going to be um, one half, zero. So I'm still labeling my X and Y intercepts there. So I've got a closed circle there. And uh, I think that's everything we have to do for that one. So now we'll move on to our next one, which is this. All right, so let's come down here. Let's write that up. So it is y is equal to a half x plus a half, where x is greater than one. So I'm gonna get x int. Well, what would my x intercept be here? Well, if I let this equal zero, and then I do a bit of rearranging here. So you might want to actually do this one as to not to make a mistake. So I'm going to get minus a half is equal to a half X. Then I'll times two up X is going to be equal to negative one, isn't it? So X is going to be equal to negative one. That's going to be my X intercept. And then my Y intercept, always easier, is just going to be a half. So that means if I come up here, I've got a point here and y is equal to a half, a point there as well. Again, if you have a, your ruler and you just put your ruler at those two points and then you rule it, you'll draw this accurately and everything will go correctly through it. So that's what the rule is going to look like. But now we need to consider the end points because this graph starts at one because it's x is greater than one. So I'm going to sub that point in. So I have a half, I put one in plus a half, a half plus a half is one. Therefore, the point is going to be, when I put one in, I get one out. So let's rub this out. I'm starting from here, and then I'm going forward from that point, because this X is greater than one. Now you might be asking yourself, well, I have X is greater than one, not equal to. So should this be an open circle? And the reason why it's not an open circle it's because remember in our previous rule, the one was included, it was less than or equal to one. So the fact that it's included here, but not included here, means that it remains a closed circle. It exists for this function. It doesn't have to be uh, equal to for both of them. As long as it's equal to on one of them, you include that point. Let's also label this point. It's one, one, just like that. Perfect. The other thing that you just wanna make sure of, do you see how it looks like it's going through three, two here? So just double check that it actually goes through that point. And you can do that by just subbing in three. So if I have a half three plus one on two, that's going to be three on two plus a half, which is four on two, which is two. Therefore, the point is three, two. So that checks out. I've gone through it accurately, that point right there. So just making sure that if you are given a grid that everything works out well there. Okay, so hopefully, you feel confident with doing something like this and just sketching it nice and neatly. Do you need all this working out? Possibly not. You could probably do it with far less, but it's always important that you know, you're doing it as accurately as possible. You're labeling your X and Y intercepts. So I didn't label that one. So that's negative one zero. I've got that one labeled. I'm labeling my endpoints. Everything is looking good here. All right, hopefully you were successful with this question.